Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's gonna be a little bit different. So I was scrolling through Google Photos, trying to pull up some older clips, and at the top, I don't know if you've ever seen it on your own Google Photos, if you have a profile, but it was saying, highlight from two years ago. And I click on it, and it was me, as a beginner pole dancer, inverting, doing a chopper. And I am all for filming myself when I am learning pole. Um, and I've suggested this to students. I know that not everybody is comfortable filming themselves, but for this very reason, I have so many clips of me attempting an invert over the years that uh, I have quite the collection. And a lot of these videos were not meant to see the light of day, but I have put together a montage of these clips. I think this video is going to be useful, especially for people who are in the beginning, mid, or even late stages of your invert. So you're going to see a lot of mistakes that I made throughout the journey. And I'm going to be like commenting as an instructor of what I would have done differently had I had the knowledge that I have now. So let's, uh, let's roll these clips. Okay. So this is January 28th, 2022. You can see I'm getting into my stronghold. It's looking good. Uh, okay, so I was able to get my feet up and then it was a crash to the ground. Yeah. So yeah, that first inverts. That's how it looks. I think that's normal. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it now. Um, also, you're gonna see that the pole god my okay so this isn't a this isn't a greenhouse this is not like my living situation that's why it looks so packed um i had to set up the when i first started pole i had to set up my this is a 50 millimeter pole by the way so um if you watched my video on grip you already know that um the bigger the diameter of the pole the harder the grip so if you if you are inverting and i didn't know this at the time if you are inverting on a thicker um, pole, it's going to be harder for you to do movements like like this, which I didn't know at the time. But you're going to see throughout these videos that I switch from a 45 to a 50. Um, and I, I, you'll see that I do have more success on the 45 millimeter pole. So, well, let's see, this is uh, February 9th, I think that is. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so in these clips, the main thing that I'm seeing is I'm extending my legs way too early. Uh, I need to be getting my hips back a lot more before I extend into my full chopper. The stronghold setup's looking good. You can tell that I really was struggling with placing that correctly. Um, let's see this one. Yeah. So... You can see, like, right when I extend my legs, I just start sliding down the pole. Uh, and the reason that's happening is because I'm just stacking all my weight over the, over, you know, where my arms are, essentially, and that's just dragging me down. You can see, like, as soon as I extend, I just start dropping. Yeah. Like, I, I can't, I literally cannot hold the weight of my body when my legs are extending out that early. This is... So yeah, th there were days like this where I would like go in the, in the greenhouse or whatever and I, I would go for like a long time, which I would not suggest, you know, because inverting is, um, especially when you're a beginner, like it's, it's a hard move. It's a lot of load on your body, probably. Okay, so that, that was good. Kind of pushing up, getting, getting my back a little bit more involved and engaged. Yeah, but there were times where I'd be out there for hours just practicing the invert. This is a day later. So I would, I would, I remember I really wanted to get my invert and I was hitting this like almost every day. And I did have some like um, issues with my back a little bit. Oh my God. Yeah. Arms just completely extending out. Um, just too much load too much load on the upper body with the legs extending out like that oh and yeah I definitely t favored my right side on the invert you know I think that's how it is though if you've got if you're training a move and you're still not totally comfortable with it you're just like 
going to stay on your right side, which is bad. You should switch. But, you know, I know that I always wanted to just go at it on the hard side or the easier side on the right. Okay, so this is it's inside. So it's a few days later, still the 50 millimeter. And that was way better. Look at my back, actually. My back looks um, a lot more straight as well. So the the, the big difference on that one, um, on, on the older clips, you can see that I've got their very, like, a slow approach to coming off the ground. Uh, it's like a very rigid lift. And then you can see it's almost like a slow stop at the top. But on that last clip, you could see that I kind of went into it quicker. Like I was using more of my nap, like my momentum of my legs being thrusted up. And you can see that actually carried through to me being able to tip back. And I was able to extend my legs at a more appropriate time rather than like earlier on in the movement. is like a day later let's see if I figured that out yeah okay so more momentum um, okay so I was just using my uh, outside leg to get into a crucifix it looks like so still an invert but not quite the invert chopper <clears throat> it looks like I'm trying to get into like a butterfly but my hips are too close to do a butterfly in this. So I just did a floor one, okay. <laughs> Good dismount. Okay, a few days later. So we're about a month in to training my invert. Still too early on the opening of the legs, but, but a little bit quicker entrance so you can see that I'm starting to pick up on okay so the faster I kind of enter into this the better chance I have of actually getting into the invert Man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys do this on your invert but uh, uh, you can see I'm just like thinking really hardcore like okay deep breaths, like I'm gonna jump off of a high cliff or something. That's how intense every setup was for me. <clears throat> so it's actually good too that I, I was catching with the outside leg to get into kind of a crucifix shape because it does actually train your back a little bit um, in that fully inverted state, how to stay engaged. Yeah, it was, so I hit the, the butterfly it looks like from the crucifix somewhat. <clears throat> Let's see it. Okay. More jumping with the outside leg. And a falling butterfly. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yes, very graceful dismounts, as you can see. This is March. It was, a lot of, it was a lot of tipping on that invert. Like I was going to one side a lot more than the other, which is normal. Like if you're tipping like that and you're inverting, you're not going like straight square back, that's fine. All right, back in the greenhouse, still with a 50 millimeter pole, March 26th. So I'm still using that outside leg. I think at this point I actually had a injury, one of my first injuries from inverting. Um, when you're dismounting, kind of like in the lower back slash rib region, when you're dismounting, sometimes you'll get this kind of like spasmy feeling. And that happens when on your dismount, you just kind of hop off and you're not like keeping that core engaged and braced to protect your spine um, and you just kind of release all your weight out and your back kind of takes the brood of that and 
that just because I was doing this so frequently, you can see in these videos, some of it's like me practicing for hours on end, day after day. Um, I think that's why I started going into the one-legged, like outside leg coming up on the pole because I was struggling with an injury at this point. So, and like I was saying, oh, this is the 45 millimeter pole. Okay, there we go. Okay, and okay, so now I'm also trying to work in an outside leg hang at this point. But you can see that I'm nabbing the pole at the calf region. You can see I'm kind of like sliding up from there. And there's a big gap um, between my knee. So that means that my hips are not being raised up high enough. Okay, so this day, I remember this very clearly. Um, this day <clears throat> was actually super monumental in me getting my invert because if you could see on that entrance, the entrance was way more smooth. I carried so much more momentum when I was entering into the invert. There was no rigid lifting and I was able to get into this like really high tucked up ball position where my hips are up high and then I think about extending my legs. The outside knee hook um, on this is still not great. You can see there's a gap where my knee is. So my hips are still not high enough, meaning that my back was not you know, my chest was not pushed out. My arms were probably a little bit too extended. So hips were a little bit low. Um, but that was a very monumental day for me in inverting. It was just like really carrying through on that momentum. Yeah, okay. So back is really checked out here. You see all that rounding? Uh -uh. Yeah, I didn't know at the time, but that rounding was why I was not getting a very good outside leg hang. Yeah, okay. So this is definitely footage that uh, should not be seen. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> that was good. That was good, actually. Just I would just take out the round. You can see um, I'm not extending so much in my arms, which is why the outside leg hangs looking a little bit cleaner. But still, it's the back. Oh, God. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm holding. That's good. And you can see that I'm kind of popping my hips up. And that got my leg up higher. Ah, this is a ball. Okay, so this really helped me, too. This helped me figure out what I should be feeling. Especially with that, like, hip, hip popping. If you've seen my tutorial on outside leg hangs, like, you'll see me kind of, like, pumping up my hips. That's, that ball really helped me nail that movement in. So that was kind of a rigid lift. So this is actually, you can see that I got way stronger because before I would not have been able to enter into that position with such a slow entrance. So this is bad here. So this is way too rigid. Like I was just lifting one leg at a time and just thinking I could go back with brute force, which now I can definitely do that. <laughs> you can see I'm disappointed, but back then I was not strong enough to do that. Um, and I probably was not uh, engage again, I was not engaging enough with my upper body and I was not tucking in my pelvis enough. Let's see. I think I'm going to do the same mistake. Well, there was a little bit more, um, a little bit more momentum carried through on that one, but sometimes, yeah, that's what it is. There's like so many mental blocks that get formed in your head. <clears throat> that was better. Except for that part. Okay, September 6th. <clears throat> Are you even here? You can see how rigid that lift is. It's really difficult for me to get up. But the same day, same day I went back. Well, that was probably one of my first cleaner looking outside leg hangs from an invert. But again, there was that momentum. That's key. Getting that momentum in there. Um, and let me pause this for a bit. So kind of a light switch came on for me at that point. If uh, I was able to kind of have my muscles contract and engage and, and, and push me 
and pull me back while my legs were shooting up behind me. So I have that momentum coming towards me in this direction and my muscles are firing correctly um, at the same time. That's how I can make my invert easier. And I don't have to be this crazy, crazy strong beast <laughs> in order to do that. So the key was not to lift so rigidly. And that just opened up so many more doors for me. Now you're gonna see, um, and I don't have it on camera the first time they did like an aerial invert on static. You'll see here in October, um, I was already getting to the point where I was able to do spinning uh, inverts. And there's the outside leg hang and actually get it on the knee. <clears throat> and then I was also doing forward spinning inverts. And my back is looking a little bit too checked out for my liking on it, but it is wildly better than it was a year ago. So. Some more footage. Some aerial spinning invert. Got the candle in the background, you know, must have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I look tired. Inverting's hard. It's a lot of work. Okay, so this is this is really um, a time where I felt like I was changing a lot in my pole. Pole dancing experience was getting easier. I was definitely getting stronger, so what would this be? Almost a year into pole dancing. Okay. Oh, when was this? This was like a year later, I think. I don't even see the date. Okay, so this is October. No, was it? I don't know. I don't know the date actually. But this was like a year later, but much, much nicer invert. Um, and then I just thought I would show you for reference what we're looking like today, okay? <laughs> uh, this is not the invert. But I want to show you the difference between what I think a solid invert is right there. Back is very much in check. Okay, nice outside leg hang. I wouldn't say that I would tweak anything really from that approach. I look fairly confident in it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the invert is not something I struggle with to this day. You can see, it's pretty comfortable for me now. Um, whether I'm doing it on the ground, static, spinning, uh, in a invert like this video is showing you. But that was my journey. So that last video was... When was that? Okay, so this last video was September 8th, 2022. And the first one was January 28th, 2020. About two and a half years in, we go from one to the other. I do know that the invert was something that I struggled through quite a bit throughout the years. Uh, and it was something I really, really wanted. And I know that a lot of people watching this probably really, really want their invert too. But I think that this might help you get a little bit more of a perspective on kind of like how much work it is for some people. I think that, you know, like sometimes I'll be teaching people and they'll get an invert like within the first day. That was not my experience as you can see. I really, really struggled with this movement. I don't think I would ever lose my invert. I think once you get it and you train it consistently, it's just something that you're not gonna ever lose. So if you're beginning your pole journey, maybe do this for yourself. Make a montage of all the clips even though you look a little bit rough in some of them like me. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Uh, so I'll see you on the next one.